In the last video of the Fun Accountants Bank Reconciliation series, I'm going to recap what you have learned from all the previous four videos and then I'm going to tie it all together in this final fifth bank reconciliation video for advanced users. Cause when we're together, it feels like we're in heaven. If it will get dark, you'll be my million stars. I know I can lean on you. Oh, you catch me like a leaf falling from a tree. We are going to celebrate completing the bank reconciliation series by showing off the skills gained and the final example of what you can achieve with the practical knowledge even in the series. Hopefully you can apply this in your own working environment. You will find that performing a bank reconciliation using accounting software programs is much easier to do than the theoretical accounting questions asked by accounting training modules. Partly because the accounting software assists with this process and partly because bank transactions are executed faster and these transactions are imported directly into your accounting system giving less opportunities for errors and deviations from the bank statement as you work in a live accounting system. The principles of bank reconciliations are very simple and remain unchanged after many, many years. Be careful not to fall into the trap of confusion and complexities that many people portray this subject to be. If you haven't seen all the videos, in this recap I will summarize them so that you can use any one of the videos as a point of reference whenever you encounter a bank reconciliation scenario that is similar to the ones explained. In this series, you have learned what bank reconciliations are and I want to simplify it for you again. A bank reconciliation is where you take your bank statement balance at a point in time and compare it to the bank balance in your books to see if they agree. Then, if they do not agree, you have to either fix the error or know the reasons for any differences. Fortunately, accounting software programs prepare the ideal templates for you so that the bank statement report can be generated with ease, noting any differences, and doing it while you finish the bank transactions allocations. So, it is really not a big deal. You have learned why bank reconciliations are important. You have learned how to do a bank reconciliation as a beginner and mostly seen how your bank reconciliation function will be completed when you import bank transactions unless there are any differences. The next videos dealt with those differences. I have dedicated a video to perform a full manual bank reconciliation, which is rarely necessary and mostly for students who are studying accounting. But I had to perform this manual bank reconciliation myself for a client, showing that these instances actually do occur. You can view this video as a theoretical exercise and an example for when you get stuck and if you can successfully pull off a manual bank reconciliation, I do not foresee that you will ever struggle with performing any type of bank reconciliation. Of course, the accounting software's bank reconciliation layouts differ and it may take some time to get used to a specific accounting software's nuances. But the principle remains the same. And for me, having worked on various accounting software programs, Sage Accounting's bank reconciliation is the easiest and quickest to perform. But that is my personal preference.
similar to the manual bank reconciliation is the full digital bank reconciliation. We dived deep into the subject of bank reconciliations as I showed all the steps to pull off a transaction by transaction comparison of the cash book with the bank statement. Following this example will give you a comprehensive framework in case you get stuck doing a bank reconciliation and also give you a good comparison of sales accountings, bank reconciliations with other software on the market. In the fourth bank reconciliation video, we went from start to finish with the banking function in Sage Accounting. I showed you my preferred method of capturing bank transactions manually with only a few transactions on a bank statement and then completed the process with a bank reconciliation as the icing on the cake. In this grand finale video, let's see how an advanced user easily and quickly performs bank reconciliations in Sage Accounting. I am logged into Sage at the Banking Transactions area. Let's go to Reconcile Banks and Credit Cards from the top navigation menu bar. Firstly, I select the appropriate bank account from the list of banks in my books. The bank reconciliation starting date is already filled in and I am happy with it. Then I choose the bank reconciliation date in the to date field. I am going to perform this bank reconciliation for the first month of the financial year which is from the 1st of March to the 31st of March. The balance field is already populated from my cash book and I'm going to fetch my bank statement to enter the bank statement balance. I'm going to select all the unreconciled transactions and after doing that you can see that the difference between my bank statement and the accounting balance is zero. To finish off the bank reconciliation I'm going to click on print to save a bank reconciliation report which I'm going to open now. This bank reconciliation report file I can keep as evidence that my bank balance in my accounting records is accurate. Lastly, I'm going to save my bank reconciliation. And that is it. This is an example of how quickly this function can be done. I'm going to perform the exact same action for the next two months until the end of May and I will forward the recording. Let's troubleshoot an obstacle that you are likely to encounter. I am at the Reconcile Banks and Credit Cards screen. I am entering the start date of the reconciliation as well as the end date. Then I get the bank statement balance and enter it in the statement balance field below the accounting balance. Everything should be fine because my accounting balance and my bank statements balance agree but after ticking the unreconciled transaction I see that there is still a large difference in my bank statement reconciliation. What now? If this happens then you know that there are transactions prior to this reconciliation period that have not been marked off as reconciled. The solution is very simple in that you have to select a prior period start date which will then display all the transactions 
that have not been yet reconciled from prior periods. And all you need to do is to select them as reconciled, as I'm doing here, and now my bank reconciliation difference is null. I think by now, after all of these bank reconciliation videos, we have chewed every bit of sugar out of the subject of bank reconciliations and I'm looking forward to sharing other valuable information with you. Thanks for watching. See you soon.